Arsenal's Champions League draw has been decided. Meanwhile, there's plenty of messages coming from the German side of things. And Jurian Timber may have just taken a little bit of a blow in regards to a potential game that could have got him some valuable match fitness. Let's talk about all of that and more in today's Arsenal News Show. Hello and welcome to the Gunnar Talk. Back again with you guys for another episode of what is our Arsenal news show. Join you every single morning at 8 a.m. UK time, or slightly after, um, every single morning. Thank you so much, as always, for joining me and making this a part of your morning routines. It is very, very appreciated. We start with uh, what is turning out to be... Oh, this is getting worrying, guys. I'll be very honest. Um, I feel like this is getting... Very, very worrying. Have I not selected the microphone? Oh, no. Have I not? No, I haven't. Yes, I have. I absolutely have. Um, it's just because this room is massive, Rob, that it's not going to sound like perfect like I'm right here. So sorry about that. It's um, it's It'll be back on Monday. Um, it's the acoustics of the room, I'm afraid. It's a big room, but I don't really have much choice. I could hold the microphone, um, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, this is the echo noise uh, that you're going to get for the next couple of days whilst I uh, whilst I house it. Um, but uh, yes, good morning to those joining us in the chat box. Thank you so much for doing so. But as I said, uh, yeah, that it's worrying. The challenge is under threat again. The one K like every single day. Yesterday we got to I think about yeah, I think about one just below one thousand. I think it was like nine hundred and fifty. So. We've got 24 hours again. We need 35 likes on that show to save the challenge. Um, but what's arguably most important, I guess, is uh, is trying to, to make sure that we get 1K on this show as well. So make sure you please do drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I guess I could hold it. Can I go like this? Does that help in any way if I hold it? The problem is if I hold it, like, I've, done, I've only got one hand. So I can hold it like this. And it probably sounds a lot better than it does if I hold it down here but it does mean I have to hold the microphone. So I'm going to try and hold the microphone and it will probably improve the uh, the sound. But uh, yeah, it's it's not great. Plus, like, if it runs along the table, it's like I'm farting, which doesn't help. See, like that, not good. <laughs> so please do uh, accept any apologies for what are not me farting, but is indeed the microphone hitting things. Uh, so yeah, but there you go. Um, right, let's jump into today's stories, shall we? Um, first of all, a really disappointing, um, a really disappointing result in the Chelsea game um, between Arsenal and the Blues. It's very frustrating um, that the title race is probably over, and it was a really poor performance. Um, I, I want there to be obviously greater competitivity. I don't want to have to talk about the manager Jonas Idavow and think has he taken this team as far as he can. Um, but there are going to be questions, I think, this season about whether or not Jonas Idavell has taken Arsenal as far as he can. Um, I really hope that that things do turn around quickly and that they win the Conti Cup. But out of the Premier League title, well, WSL title race, out of the FA Cup, not in the Champions League this season, the performance wasn't, wasn't good enough. Chelsea were weakened as well. Um, so not good. And I think there's a fair few questions about the performance. I saw Ian Wright, of course, post yesterday as well. I was really not happy with the way in which the girls played. Um, so, yeah, one to reflect upon and one that might come back for discussion come the end of the season. Meanwhile, Arsenal's under-21 game against Blackburn has been uh, cancelled and will be rescheduled for April. This was Saturday. Today, it was supposed to be played. Um, and it could have been an opportunity for Arsenal to play some of their senior players. Uh, PL2 rules mean that you can play at least five players, um, well, up to five players um, over the age of 21. And also they can play a goalkeeper over the age of 21. So it could have been an opportunity for Jury and Timber to get some minutes, some really valuable minutes and a bit of a rebound game before he works his way back to fitness. This now begs the question whether or not there'll be any behind-closed-door friendlies that take place this week for Arsenal because, of course, they don't have this game to use any uh, fixtures that they could have used to, to help Yuri and Timber get back to full fitness, give Partey some minutes, uh, give Zinchenko some minutes, give some other players some minutes, uh, like Fabio Vieira, Smith Rowe, etc. So it'll be intriguing if there is any behind-closed-doors friendlies that do take place this week. If there are, 
you'll get all the updates uh, as and when we get them. Me meanwhile, of course, the big news of yesterday was the Champions League. It was Arsenal's draw, um, and all of Arsenal's supporters were very excited to see who we would get played against. But there was never any need to speculate. There was never any need for predictions. There was never any need to put any bets on who on earth you've wanted Arsenal to get because there was only ever going to be one result and that was Arsenal getting Bayern Munich in the Champions League quarterfinals. And that is exactly what has happened. Uh, Arsenal will play Bayern Munich at the Emirates in April. Um, they will play the first game at home, the second game in Munich. Arsenal, of course, the last time they played Bayern Munich, lost 10-2 on aggregate, but it is a very, very different situation now. And Bayern and Arsenal have arguably even swapped positions in terms of perhaps their European competitivity. Um, Bayern Munich, of course, having to win at home after losing to Lazio in their first leg game, um, but we'll be looking to try and avoid that this time around. There will be no Bayern Munich supporters in the Emirates Stadium for the first leg. They have been punished for throwing fireworks onto the pitch in their previous game, and that means that Arsenal can sell the away section for home tickets, meaning 60,000 Arsenal fans. No more, no less. 60,000 fans will be there in the stadium cheering on Arsenal with no Bayern fans supposed to be inside. Of course, you'll probably get a few that buy some Arsenal home tickets, but uh, well, hopefully they're identified and kicked out rather quickly because we don't want any Bayern fans in the Emirates. We just want Arsenal to be pushing their team forwards through until the final whistle. So let's keep those fingers crossed that that turns out to be the case. The other draws, Real Madrid against Manchester City, and that is the pairing of quarterfinals that Arsenal have, meaning if Arsenal beat Bayern Munich, they will play the winner of Real Madrid and Manchester City, which means that Atletico Madrid and Dortmund and PSG and Barcelona are the other two draws, and they will face each other in the semifinals, the winner of those two quarterfinals, meaning that anyone that gets to the final on Arsenal's side, be it Arsenal, Real, City or Bayern, will face one of PSG, Barcelona, Dortmund and Atletico in the in the in the final of the Champions League, which is for any team, I think, will be looking at that and going, if you can make the final, you've got a really, really good chance. So let's wait and see what happens. Meanwhile, Edu, of course, was at the draw and has been discussing uh, Arsenal's hopes and Arsenal's reaction, if you like, to the draw, which of course sees Arsenal play Bayern for the first time since their last uh, knockout game prior to this season. Uh, you can watch the entirety of the uh, interview, of course, on the Arsenal website, but uh, just for the benefit of, of some quotes, which I had for some reason in front of me and have now just disappeared. So do bear with me because I'm going to get you those quotes. <laughs> I always prepare this stuff usually, but for some reason, because I swapped laptops, I didn't cross it over. But Edu speaking, here we go, said, it's a beautiful game to play. We are going to be against a team in Bayern Munich that are very experienced in the competition and the players they have are amazing. But we have good momentum. We are really excited to face them and see if we can go through. He continued by saying the way the players and the team are performing is very exciting and we are playing at our best moment at the moment. Uh, so let's carry on playing in the way that we're playing to see how far we can go. It's a privilege to be here in the Champions League. There are a lot of big clubs here so we'll have to do our very best to carry on in the competition. It's the quarterfinal of the Champions League. There'll be a lot of fantastic players on the field and I'm sure it'll be a great atmosphere in both stadiums. We'll do our best and try to do everything to get through to the next phase and one last point he was asked about if Arsenal can go all the way in the Champions League and he said why not we have to dream because we have to uh, because of the way that we are playing and performing at the moment um, we have the momentum this club in the position we have to always be in because of the size of it and the way that we are and we always it feels that we're back where we belong and he's absolutely right we are back where we belong as a football club back in the Champions League quarterfinals with the hope of progressing past a massive side in Bayern Munich. Meanwhile, Thomas Muller, you may have seen, released a quite funny message uh, over on the social feeds. I encourage you to go and try and find it if you feasibly can. Sending a little message saying, um, Kai Havertz, I'm coming for you. Um, he really did speak quite positively about the draw. You can't not like Thomas Muller. I, I have always enjoyed Thomas Muller's interviews the way he is. And indeed, if he is at the Emirates, I'll certainly be trying to grab him in the mix zone for a word. Although if he's been battered by Arsenal at the Emirates, maybe he won't be so keen to chat about that. But uh, certainly is uh, a player that I always appreciated, always liked. And I do appreciate his uh, the his attempts when he, when he talks in English in interviews and stuff. He's usually quite entertaining. So yeah, Thomas Muller, 
We're coming for you, mate. I look forward to it. I really, really do. Um, meanwhile, Bayern CEO Jan Christian Driesen has also been speaking after the draw result and has been speaking about uh, kind of the relationship that Arsenal have had with Bayern Munich over the course of the last however many years. He says, Arsenal are in top form as Premier League leaders. It's going to be an even contest. They're no longer the team who we comfortably beat three in the last three games. Nevertheless, the target is clear. After three quarterfinal exits in a row, we're desperate to progress. It's certainly going to be a difficult road to Wembley. So the little narratives, the mind games have started. Arsenal no longer the team they beat comfortably the last three times, of course, that Arsenal and Bayern have faced off against one another. Now, I I don't know why this should, it shouldn't bother me much, but it did. But I think we should try and use that. We should absolutely try and use that. The last three times we played Bayern Munich, they've beat us 5-1. 2017 March, 2017 February, November 2015. All 5-1 defeats. Prior to that, the record wasn't too bad. Arsenal beating Bayern Munich 2-0, um, of course, in their group stage game. You might remember the uh, the Meza Ozil go after that brilliant Hector Bellerin run. We drew 1-1 in March of 2014, losing frustratingly 2-0 in uh in Bayern previous to that and in February of 2013 we lost 3-1 in Bayern but won one nil in March of 2005 in 22nd of February 2005 we lost 3-1 in Bayern however that season before reaching the Champions League final as well go back to 2001 we lost one nil in Bayern but in the 2000 game in December we drew two Two all Champions League matches they were. That's the full history of Arsenal's record against Bayern. We need revenge. We need to finally progress past Bayern in this competition. And I have real hope and optimism that indeed that is going to be possible. Thomas Tuchel has also had his say on the uh, draw as well. Of course, Thomas Tuchel has been under quite a bit of pressure at Bayern this season because they don't look like they're going to be progressing through uh, as as the winners of the competition, unless indeed there is some major uh, issues for Bayer Leverkusen. He said, Arsenal have been playing consistently at the top for two years. It's a homogeneous, which I don't know what that means, dangerous team. They score a lot of goals. Now, we like our TGT-isms uh, at the show, but homogeneous. I'd, I'd love to know what that means. It could be a translation thing. It says, all of the same kind, alike, a homogeneous team. I guess maybe it means like we're quite cohesive. Does it mean that like we, everyone's kind of on the same page? It's a bit of a difficult one, that. I've never seen that word used um, to describe a team. It means alike, doesn't it? So they're a very alike, dangerous team. I suppose he's saying that we're quite similar to Bayern in some ways, I guess is what he's saying. Um, some high-level vocab, I appreciate it. He says, we certainly have the most difficult road imaginable ahead of us now playing against one of the best teams in Europe. So he feels like that they've got the most difficult draw in drawing Arsenal. I love it. Uh, um, so, yeah, I, I really, really interesting. Really interesting in G, indeed. Some of you are trying to correct my pronunciation. Is it homogenous? Homogenous is how you pronounce it. That does make a lot more sense. There you go. Not homogeneous. <laughs> homogenous. There you go. Lovely stuff. You live, you learn. Every day's a school day. Meanwhile, the draw for the Europa and Conference League also took place. There's obviously some Arsenal ramifications in these because of um, uh, because of some of the teams that are involved in this. Benfica play Marseille. Liverpool, of course, Arsenal's title race. Um, challengers. Uh, Atalanta uh, as well face them. Will that be a team that tests them more than Sparta Prague? I certainly hope so. Uh, AC Milan take on Roma in an all Italian tie. And Bayer Leverkusen, Granite Jackets, Bayer Leverkusen face West Ham uh, in their tie. In the Conference League, Aston Villa play, uh, play Lille. And uh, because of Aston Villa's progression through the tournament, I imagine that will have some impact on some of Arsenal's Premier League games being shifted because, uh, of course, they have to play Aston Villa um, as they still do have to play. Um, well, we've played both West Ham and Liverpool, so we're not affected by them. But certainly, I think the Aston Villa game uh, will mean that one of our fixtures is moved to a Sunday. Uh, they're playing against Lille, as I say. Olympiacos playing against Fenerbahce. Victoria Pilsen playing Fiorentina. And Club Brugge playing against Pauk as well. So that's the two European uh, second and third tier competitions and the teams that are involved in them and where they'll be playing for next round in the quarterfinals. Very interesting indeed. It could be an all-English Europa League quarterfinal. I think it's more likely to be a Bayer Leverkusen 
Liverpool final, which of course would be quite the narrative between Jurgen Klopp and Xabi Alonso. Now, if you want to get your hands on a fantastic prize of a William Saliba signed shirt, you can do so by going to the link in the video description. I recommend that you do. There is just over 100 tickets left uh, with this competition that will be running out in just over a week's time. It has sold qu pretty quickly. 320 tickets have gone in the space of a couple of days. So I recommend that you get hold of this one as soon as you can. Plenty of print, uh, instant win prizes, including a Kieran Tinney signed and framed Arsenal shirt, a Tony Adams signed Arsenal shirt, a Steve Bold signed Arsenal shirt, a Back Four signed Arsenal shirt, a Ben White signed Arsenal shirt, an Alexander Sinchenko signed Arsenal shirt, and a back four signed Arsenal montage as well, that famous back four from the days of old. If you want to get involved in that, the link, as I say, is down in the description. It's UK only, but best of luck to all of those that have got involved in the competition. I'm now going to reposition this mic because my arm is aching holding this. I'm not going to lie. I don't know if I can reposition it in any better way than I have done here, um, but we're going to give it a go during this break. So let's move to part two as I frantically try to arrange how this microphone is going to stand. Back right after this. I think we've done it. I think, I, I think that's pretty good. I may have to lean in a little bit, but uh, and I can't knock it. If I knock it once, it is going to be... It's going to fall over. So, but we've we've got it. No hands. There you go. <laughs> Hopefully, that's going to be fine for sound quality wise. Hopefully, you can see me all right as well. Um, thank you so much, as I say, for listening. Uh, please do help us on our way to one k every single day. Um, we've got to hit that one thousand like target. We still needed to do it on yesterday's show. So we've got twenty four hours to save the challenge of yesterday's video as well. And of course, we've still got to hit 1K likes on this video too. So please do help us out. Drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new and turn those notifications on so you never miss a show. This is part two where we tackle your questions from the chat box. So without further ado, let's jump into it and get some of your thoughts. Uh, Granddaddy Guna says, uh, do you think that the absence of away fans will detract from the atmosphere? I thought about this because sometimes you feed off of like the away fans, don't you? You can feed off of the energy, the excitement that the fans at the other end of the ground can bring. I think it happened against Porto. I think it happened in that sense. I think we absolutely fed off of their noise at times and responded to them and it kicked us into gear. So, yeah, I think there could be positives and negatives to having no away fans in the ground, but hopefully we'll use it to our advantage. Um, Kazang says, what's your Arsenal Bayern Munich combined 11? I think that's an interesting question, isn't it? I mean, I have to have a quick look at the Bayern team just so I don't forget anyone um, that you'd think I would. But uh, in goal, it's got to be Manuel Neuer, of course. Uh, I mean, let's just go through their fixtures, shall we? If I look at their last lineup that they used, they might have some players that are injured, of course. They won 8-1 against Mainz. Uh, a bit of a response there. So Manuel Neuer in goal. I think we've got to go for that. At right back, you've got a choice between Joshua Kimmich and Ben White. Oh, that's tough, isn't it? That's, I'll tell you what, that's a big credit to Ben White. Big credit to Ben White. Um, but Manuel Neuer goes in goal for sure. Ben White or Kimmich? I'm tempted to say Ben White. Oh, I really am tempted to say Ben White. I think you have to go Kimmich. I think you have to go Kimmich. I think he is the better player, more experienced. So I'll go Kimmich. At the back, you've got Delict up Meccano and Eric Dyer. I think Saliba and Gabriel, you know, are the best options. I really do. I don't. I think both Saliba and Gabriel start for Bayern Munich right now. Um, so I'll go with that. At left back, Alfonso Davies or Kivio. I think you have to go with Alfonso Davies there. So we've got two fullbacks from Bayern and Alfonso Davies uh, in Kimmich, and of course a Saliba and Gabriel. I think that's the back four. Um, into the midfield, you've got Conrad Lima. You've got Leon Goretzka. Uh, you've got Rafael Guerrero as well, who can play in midfield and, and does do on a regular occasion. Kimmich, of course, can play there as well. I think you've got to go with Declan Rice and Goretzka. I think Declan Rice, Goretzka and Erdegaard would be the midfield three for me. Um, I think that would be my midfield three. Yeah, Erdegaard, Goretzka and, um, uh, and Declan Rice would be the midfield three that I would go for. And then in terms of the front three... Uh, You've got Martinelli, Saka, and uh, Havertz, or Jesus, of course. But I think you've got to go with Saka on the right, Musiala on the left, and Harry Kane through the middle. So it's actually a very competitive, I think, joined up um, thing for Arsenal and Bayern. There are, 
Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting one. So for Arsenal players, you've got Saliba, Gabriel, Odegaard, uh, Rice and Saka. So five Arsenal, six Bayern. I think they just edge it in terms of the team. It's going to be a very competitive game. Very, very, very competitive game. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, let's go to Odin says, hi, Tom, just to check. Episode 428. Um, there's 979 likes. Come on, people. We need to get the likes up. Well, it was 950 before we started the show, so that's a, that's a good sign. Uh, Drunk Star Russ says, Tom, depending on fitness, do you think there's an ever a time that we'd play Rice, Partey, and Jorginho at the same time? Not from the start, but I certainly do think in ter- certain games, substitutions may lead us to use that midfield three. Last season, we had periods of the season where Xhaka, Jorginho, and Partey were all on the field at the same time. So I think in certain game states, we would go to that midfield three at times. Uh, Saitama says, uh, will the Porto experience be enough for us to settle into the tournament and play our way no matter the opponent or do we have to go to Dubai or somewhere else again? I think the Porto game is going to be really important for us. I think that experience of playing against that side in that occasion and going through will be a huge, huge benefit to us going forwards. Uh, Tony says, I haven't really seen much of Saka in these games. They've been really locking him down on that right wing. Watching Porto do everything in their power to stop him was frustrating, the amount of fouls that they committed. Yeah, and I look, I think the Bayern game is going to be far more open. They're going to get far more opportunities against Bayern and an opportunity to really attack them. I'm really excited for it. I think there's a really good scoop um, for that game, a really good coup, maybe, what we could have in getting through. Ashmal says, Tom, do you think Arteta would take a pragmatic approach for the remaining Champions League games? Haven't seen us pressing us like usual against Porto, or is that something to do with the way Porto set up? I think with Porto, there was an attempt to try and coax them out a little bit more, trying to be a little bit savvier, a little bit cleverer, and try and hit them when we can. We've got more possession, more dominance, and more players than them in the final third. So I think it wasn't necessarily about just dominating and pressurizing them. It was more about coaxing them out of defense, opening up those spaces, and trying to hit them where possible. Uh, Rob says, I heard somewhere on commentary saying that the other European results would likely lead to a coefficient addition for the Premier League in Europe. Is that an extra team in the Champions League and a Europa League Conference League? So basically, there's a lot of talk about Germany, England, Italy, which nation will be getting the extra position when it comes to um, the the Champions League next season. It looks like, because West Ham knocked out Freiburg, that England at the moment are the most likely to get, with Italy, that extra Champions League qualification place. I mean, in fifth place in the Champions League would indeed become... Uh, sorry, a fifth place in the Premier League would become another Champions League qualification spot, which both Aston Villa and Spurs and Manchester United will certainly be hoping happens. But now both the uh, West Ham and Arsenal have been drawn against German teams again. It could still be that there are changes to that. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. Uh, It could be the deciders about that fifth place, which could help Spurs which is a shame, but uh, it could be just pass and parcel of it as well. Uh, Ames says, can Arsenal fans be issued the unused buy-in seats due to ban or will they be remaining empty? Yes, Arsenal can sell those seats to Arsenal um, fans. So we will have Arsenal fans in the away section in our own stadium, which is one to look out for. Uh, Maximir says, hi, Tom, what's the news on Timber? Did I miss something? Uh, Sadly, he's not going to be able to play a game uh, today in the under-21s because it's been cancelled. So opportunity to play Yuri and Timber in that game. Sadly, um, that hope of playing has gone. So any hope of playing will now move to any potential behind closed doors friendly if we indeed do get it. Uh, Tony says, who would you rather start, Trossard or Martinelli? Uh, People say Trossard. Uh, is more of a super sub. I think Martinelli obviously is our starter, um, but if Martinelli is never not there, I, I lean towards Trossard, and I did for the the game against Porto, and I'm glad that I did because, of course, that goal proved to be absolutely pivotal in that fixture. And Maximus says, I think Roma winning has shifted that back to Italy. England are currently third in the coefficient rankings as well. Okay, well that's good news. Um, Drunks for us says Martinelli Trossard Saka could swap wings in difficult games. Have we ever done that? Um, yeah, we did it against Porto. The amount of times that Trossard was popping up right or Saka was popping up left. I'd recommend go back and watching it because it was really quite interesting to see how free a number of our wide players were. Uh, Philip says safe bet Arsenal to win, Kane to dive and score a penalty. Uh, and says Saka and Martinelli are key in the Bayern match. Get them running at Bayern defence and we'll have them on toast. I did speak to a couple of people who watch Bayern far more than I do. 
And the big things that they've heard about is that they struggle against teams that move the ball quickly, that attack down those wide areas and really do press them. I think we saw that when Bayer Leverkusen beat them 3-0 in the Bundesliga oh. clash that really did hand a massive advantage to Xabi Alonso's side. And I think Arsenal will use a lot of those same principles. I think they might look at that game. And I know that they play with wing-backs, but of course our wide areas are still very, very dangerous. So one to look out for. I'm really excited for that game and I cannot wait to see what Arsenal can pull off against Bayern Munich as well. Scrolling down the chat as well, uh, Thomas says, uh, Tom, do you know when the ballot for the Bayern Munich game is? I don't, Tom, I'm afraid. I can't give you that information. I don't know when it is. I can tell you what the dates of those games are, though. Of course, they have now been decided. Uh, they will play Bayern Munich at home on Tuesday the 9th of, Feb of, of April. Sorry, at 8 o'clock, that is uh, a couple of days, two, three days after the game at Brighton. Uh, we then have the game against Aston Villa at home. Following that, I'm quite glad we've got a home game between the two, which means we're not doing too much travelling. And then we go to Bayern, of course, as well. That said, that game against Aston Villa could get moved to the Sunday um, because Aston Villa will probably be playing on Thursday. So it's likely that Aston Villa game will be pushed to a Sunday. Uh, Wolves, of course, is the game after that Bayern Munich match, but that could also get postponed if indeed Wolves beat Coventry in the FA Cup. So we may have a big gap after that buying game still as well. And that game in the weekend might get cancelled or they might move the Chelsea game there depending on when they play against uh, their potential uh, FA Cup quarter or semi-final and the results in those games too. So there's still lots of movement that can happen in the fixtures because of different results. So there you go. Um, Sean says, I heard it's the 18th um, is what they were saying on X in terms of the... Um, in terms of what? What's the 18th? Um, have I, what? Oh, the booking. Oh, sorry, the, 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 the ballot. I'm assuming that's what you're talking about. The ballot uh, will be on the 18th, apparently. If Sean is right, there you go. I can't confirm that. I don't know. But people in the chat box are seemingly saying the 18th. Um, so maybe that gives you uh, a bit of an indication of when that'll be. So just keep an eye on, of course, the information that gets sent out. From the club, uh, Drunk Star says, do, they, do the bookies even give odds on a Kane penalty? It's virtually guaranteed, is it not? It almost feels like it's guaranteed, doesn't it? Uh, Jalali says, what's the state of your FPL team this week with all the blanks? Are you free hitting? I am indeed free hitting this week. I'm going to be making some key changes to my team this morning just after I get off today's show, which we'll be doing very shortly. Um, let's scroll up a little bit more. Uh, Rowan says, it's ridiculous that the Sox delayed the women's game. It's embarrassing, a disgrazia. Surely Chelsea could have been the team using their away socks instead of us. Uh, it was a disaster from the start. It, look, I don't think you can necessarily blame it too much on that. The performance wasn't good enough. Um, we need to be better and there needs to be questions and we need to talk about how this Arsenal team are going to move forwards and compete with Chelsea in the future. That is the biggest thing, you know, in investing in our young players, moving on from some of our maybe more storied players, and then seeing what the next steps are managerially as well. Uh, Mrs. Thierry Henry says, it's all on the Arsenal website, ballot Monday to Wednesday. That's the expectation of when it will drop. So there you go. Um, I think we're going to end the show there. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. Really appreciate your time. I'm going to end it because I'm still not 100% well and my sinuses are so painful when I talk. That said, I'm going to take a little bit of a break. I'm going to be hopping on with Albert on Albert JTV at nine. So just under half an hour and I'll be jumping over with Albert. So if you're not done seeing this, rather ill face uh you can uh, jump over to albert jtv i'll make sure to share it on our community feed and you can watch some more conversation about the champions league over there do drop a like before you go help us to hit 1k every single day help thank you for everyone that's helped us on the previous video let's have a quick check have we reached 1k uh, we're 17 likes away on yesterday's morning show so please make sure if you haven't already done so help us keep that target We've got 24 hours to save the challenge, as we always say, uh, so help us. Thank you. Have a fantastic Saturday. I'll speak to you tomorrow morning ahead of me going up to Stamford Bridge to watch Chelsea against Leicester, working that game. Wish me luck. Uh, and as always, stay safe, stay well, happy and respectful, and up the Arsenal.